Hi everyone, um, my name is Katie Shawarajan and I'm super excited to talk to you and do virtual be a scientist. So before I get into too much science, um, a little bit about myself. I grew up in Los Angeles and graduated from Berkeley in uh, 2019, so last spring. And outside of science, I really enjoy um, being outside, so like biking and hiking and backpacking, um, especially in the Sierra Nevada mountains where you can go to these really cool, beautiful alpine lakes. Um, so yeah, right now I work in a lab at UC Berkeley where I study microbiology, which you may or may not be familiar with, but can be easily broken down into two parts. So the first half of that word is micro. Um, and micro refers to the group of organisms that we study, which are called microbes. So these microbes are incredibly small, so like super, super small. Uh, they live pretty much everywhere. They come in all shapes and sizes, and they do pretty much anything you can think about, um, which I think make them really cool um, and really fun to study. Um, so one way I like to describe exactly how small they are is by using your fingerprint. So if you look at your fingerprint, you can see all of these little ridges. And to us, that looks pretty small, um, and that's because we're fairly large compared to our fingerprint. But for a microbe, the little ridges in our fingerprint are almost like mountains and valleys, um, just given the size of the microbes. Which brings us to the other half of the equation is how does something so small exist? Um, and that's by virtue of its internal biology. So anything that keeps it alive is its biology, and that's what we study in microbiology. Um, so that can be anything um, from the chemical reactions that happen inside of a cell that keep it alive to the way that these microbes use chemical languages to communicate with, we, with one another, um, to even the way that their DNA acts as a blueprint for how the microbe grows and divides and reproduces and survives in different environments. So microbes can be a lot of different things, which make them really fun to study. Um, so that can be anything from fungi to bacteria to viruses. Um, and when we think about microbes, we often think about them as bad guys, um, primarily because we associate them with disease and infections and bad things. But that's just a small minority of microbes. The vast majority of microbes are either neutral or good. And we know this because microbes live pretty much everywhere. Um, they live in our food and in our drinks. Microbes are what um, allow breads to rise when we bake them. They ferment cheese and yogurts, and they're what make kombucha fizzy. Microbes also live inside of us, which is super cool. Um, they break down really complex molecules that are in our foods um, inside of our digestive systems and allow us to be able to use them, which is super cool because in that situation, we have a relationship with the microbes that live inside of us. And then microbes also live in soils and oceans where they function in nutrient cycling. So taking complex molecules, including that have carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus, all of these really important nutrients for life, and they break them down and recycle them in their own ecosystem, which is super cool um, and super important in, our, in the environment. And so for the most part, microbes can do a lot of really good things. Um, one example that you might have heard of recently is the fact that microbes um, some microbes can eat some parts of plastic, and some microbes can help kind of clean up oil spills, which I think is a really cool example um, because I think it's a great demonstration of how the chemistry that microbes can do can help us clean up um, our environment and help decrease some of the pollution that humans have caused. We also know that microbes can help plants grow and humans survive. Um, so in particular, really complex communities of microbes, so where we have a lot of different types of microbes, um, function in something called a microbiome, where they help um, plants and humans and other animals access chemicals and like molecules that they wouldn't otherwise be able to use. And it works the same way in compost, where microbes break down really complicated things and allow other organisms to use it. Um, and part of what's really cool about microbes is that they help us regulate our climate. 
Um, and so this is the part of microbiology that I work on in particular. So I work on a group of organisms called the methanogens, which are a really ancient type of microbe that produces methane gas. So this is important because methane is a greenhouse gas. And you might be familiar with something called the greenhouse gas effect. So the greenhouse gas effect refers to the fact that the Earth has this, its atmosphere, which is outlined here in light blue. And when radiation from the sun hits the Earth, most of the radiation bounces back off into the solar system. But some of that radiation stays as trapped heat in between the Earth's surface and between the Earth's atmosphere. And historically, so like billions of years ago, this was a good thing. These greenhouse gases helped the Earth be become a habitable place for plants and humans to evolve. But right now we have way too many greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. And part of that is because we have a lot of carbon emissions um, that go off into the atmosphere and traps heat. And one of that, those gases is methane. And why methane is super cool um, is because it's only produced, or it's mostly produced by microbes. And in particular, the microbes that I study called the methanogens, um, which is where I come in, because they use really complicated chemistry um, that we don't fully understand because we don't really know how these microbes work and they're really hard to study. Um, and so the question then becomes, how do you study something that you can't see and something that's as complicated as a microbe? So I use a, um, a series of techniques called genetic techniques. Um, and what I do is I take plain, boring methanogens, like just the normal methanogen, and then I mutate them a bunch. And when I mutate them, I add something called a DNA barcode which is just a unique sequence of A's and T's and C's and G's that I drop into um, their DNA and that allows me to tag them almost. So then I can use that to track how the mutant behaves under different conditions, which is super cool because then it starts to allow us to say these genes, so these parts of like the DNA are important under different conditions or these parts of the DNA might not be important under these conditions. And it helps us decipher this gigantic puzzle of how do microbes produce methane, which is super fun and really interesting and something that I really enjoy doing. But that was a fairly specific example of microbiology. Um, what I love about microbiology is the fact that it exists pretty much everywhere. Um, so my science challenge for you all is to try to find an example of an everyday microbe. So something that might be living in your food, something that might be outside, something that might be in your home, um, something that might be on you even. Um, so think about that um, and we'll come back and discuss it in a few, in a few days, a week or so. Um, and I have my own example to share with you, which are these glowing bioluminescent waves that you might've heard about. Um, so in Southern California right now, like San Diego and Los Angeles are experiencing something called a red tide, um, which is an algal bloom that has created these really cool bioluminescent waves, meaning that at nighttime, all of the microbes that are in this algal bloom, um, these microbes called dinoflagellates, get excited. And so when they get agitated by waves or someone like walking through them or fish swimming through them, they emit light, which is super cool because you can see it at nighttime and who doesn't want to see glowing waves? <laughs> um, so yeah, that is my example and I'm super excited to come back and hear all of your examples. Um, yeah, hope you're all doing well and um, I'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening.